All right, we're going to practice some introduction to square roots. This is section 6.1 practice problems for Al Grosch's book, Developmental Math 2. We're going to start with some uh, perfect squares. And we went through a list of the perfect squares in the lecture. So you're really just identifying what number, when it's multiplied times itself, equals the radicant, in this case, 9. What number times itself equals 9? That would be 3. The square root of 36 is 6, because 6 times 6 makes 36. The square root of 100 is 10. 10 times 10 makes 100. The square root of 144, what number times itself makes 144? That would be 12. The square root of 625 may not be readily known, but if you watch the lecture, I wrote this one on the list because you, this is a really common radicand. The square root of 625 is 25. 25 times 25. Okay, now this one provides a little bit of a trick here. Whenever you're trying to find the square root of a power of 10, it's 10 times something, all you have to do is cut the zeros in half. In this case, with this radicand, there are four zeros here. So the square root will be a one with only two zeros or 100. You just cut the zeros in half. All right, estimate the following square roots. So this is where we're going to identify what two square roots does this, what two perfect squares does this fall between? The square root of three is between the square root of one and the square root of four. The square root of one is one the square root of 4 is 2. So the square root of 3 must be someplace between 1 and 2. And it is closer to 4 than it is to 1. So it's probably closer to 2. So I'm going to say it's uh, 1.8, approximately 1.8. They get closer with a calculator, but we're not using the calculator. The square root of 30 is between the square root of 25 and the square root of 36, which would be between 5 and 6. Which one is it closer to? It's almost exactly in the middle, so we're going to say this is approximately 5.5. The square root of 51 is between the perfect squares 49 and 64. It's closer to 49, so the square root of 49 is 7, the square root of 64 is 8. This should be... Um, this is closer to this side than this side. So it's closer to 7 than 8. Uh, probably 7.2, approximately 7.2. The square root of 92 is between the perfect squares 81 and 100 when their square roots are 9 and 10. Uh, which one is it closer to? It looks like it's closer to 100. So this is going to be probably approximately 9.7. Those are approximations, by the way, guys. Approximations. Okay. Simplify. If you remember the trick to simplify um, a radicand that's a variable with an exponent, you just divide the exponent by 2. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. So the square root of x to the 6 is x cubed. The square root of x to the 30 is x to the 15, 30 divided by 2. Is that it? All right, we have some more on this page. When you have coefficients and exponents, you deal with coefficient first. The square root of 4 is 2, because 2 times 2 makes 4. The square root of the variable is found by dividing the exponent by 2. Uh, 2 divided by 2 makes 1, so this is x to the 1. And we don't usually write the 1 exponent. You can if you want. We don't usually. The square root of 81 is 9. 9 times 9 makes 81. And then these exponents you're going to divide by 2. So x to the squared, 4 divided by 2, y to the 6. 12 divided by 2 is 6. The square root of 100 is 10, because 10 times 10 makes 100. And then for each of these variables, we will divide these exponents by 2. 
So 8 divided by 2 is 4, 18 divided by 2 is 9, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. The square root of 144x to the 50, y to the 200. The square root of the coefficient first, what number times itself makes 144? That would be 12. And then for the variables, you divide the exponents by 2. So 50 divided by 2 is 25, and 200 divided by 2 is 100. Down here we have the triangles, so we're going to use Pythagorean's theorem. There's a good explanation of how to use Pythagorean's theorem in the lecture, so make sure you go back there and watch it if you haven't. So, first of all, Pythagorean's theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And then on the triangle, we identify where is the right angle, because this is important to the, equ the equation. The right angle is here. So these two sides that make the right angle are going to be A and B. So that would be 3 squared plus 4 squared equals C squared. And since this is the longer side, the X is going to replace the C. And now we simplify. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. 9 plus 16 is 25. Now we're not trying to find x squared. We're trying to find x. So to get this square off, the opposite operation is the square root. The square root of x squared is x. And that gets the square wave. But you have to do the same thing on both sides. So the square root of 25 is 5. So this x equals 5. This is Pythagorean's theorem again, so we'll start by writing it. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Identify where the right angle is, and these two sides that make the right angle will be a and b. So this time we're going to have x squared plus 24 squared equals, and the c is going to be replaced by the 26. So we have x squared plus 24 squared. All right, go off to the side, multiply this out. 24 times 24 is 576. And 26 times 26 is 676. Now we're trying to uh, solve for x here, so we need to subtract this 576 to isolate that x. So we have x squared equals 676 minus 576 is 100. So to get this square off of here, the next step is to use the opposite operation, which is the square root. The square root of x squared is x. And the same thing on this side, the square root of 100 is 10. So x equals 10. And on 19, we're going to find the distance using the distance formula. Find the distance between these two points. And here's the distance formula written out for you. We just need to label these. So that's where I'm going to start. This would be x1, y1, x2, y2. And then I use those labels to fit them into the formula. So x2 will be 1 x1 will be negative 2, y2 will be 5, y1 will be 9. So let's fit them in. x2 minus x1 plus y2 minus y1. So simplify. This becomes a plus because of those two negatives there. 2 plus 1 is 3, so this is 3 squared. 5 minus 9 is negative 4, so that's negative 4 squared. 3 squared is 9, negative 4 squared is 16, so this becomes the square root of 25, which is 5. So the distance between those two points will be 5 units. Try it on number 20. 
Again, we're going to start by labeling X1, Y1, X2, Y2. And by labeling, you're just avoiding confusion. That's all. It's just helping you to keep the positions of those coordinates uh, correct and straight. So X2 minus X1 will be negative 6 minus negative 3. And that will be squared. Plus Y2, negative 2, minus Y1 is 5 squared. So again, we have these negatives here, these double negatives we can cancel like that. So this is going to become negative 6 plus 3, negative 3 squared, plus negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7 squared. Negative 3 squared is 9, negative 3 times negative 3, negative 7 squared is 49. So we have 9 plus 49 here. 9 plus 49 is 58. And unfortunately, this is not a perfect square. So let's do the estimating like we did before. This is between the two perfect squares, 49 and 64. Uh, it's a little bit closer to the square root of 64. 58 is closer to 64. But these perfect squares give us the square roots of 7 and 8. So this is going to be approximately... 7.7, .7, something like that. You could plug it into the calculator to get a, a closer approximation, but sometimes we like to practice without the calculator.